Blessings, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Patty Valenzuela podcast. I'm so glad to be with you again. This is part two. If you recall last week, I talked about 10 things, and I wanted to come to you and bring you 10 things on what to do while you wait. How are we supposed to wait on the promises of God, on everything that God has spoken into our lives? How are we supposed to wait? So I gave you one through five last week, and I want to finish six through 10 today. So number six, what do I do? while I wait for the promises of God, while you're waiting. And I said to you last week that it's not us crossing our arms and waiting for, you know, God to just send some angel to deliver this promise. And, you know, we don't have to do anything on our part. No, there are things that we have to do on our end. So one thing that we have to understand is that God has his responsibility and we have our responsibility while we're waiting for the promises of God. And so number six so I want you to hear, number six is you've got to be strong and you must be courageous. Now, Psalm chapter 27, verse one, 13, actually the 14, says this, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart or take courage and wait for the Lord. One of the things that you're going to face while you're waiting for the Lord and one of the greatest obstacles that people encounter while they're waiting for God to release the promise, to bring the breakthrough, is going to be fear and anxieties and all kinds of stress because people tend to fret when they're waiting for something for a long time. So one of the things that you have to be is you must be strong and you must be courageous. You cannot allow fear to take root inside of your heart. You cannot let the whispers of the enemy tell you that the promises of God are not going to be fulfilled in your life. You cannot allow fear to come and govern your life and then lean towards anxiety and stress. And now you're freaking out because the promises of God have not been answered. You cannot allow yourself to be worried while you're waiting for the promises of God. God is not moved by our complaining, by throwing a tantrum. God is moved by faith. And so the opposite of faith is fear and worry. So we've got to be strong, we've got to take courage, and we've got to believe God as we're waiting for Him. Now, courage is to confront something, and, and it doesn't mean that it's there's no fear. Quite the contrary, it means to do something even afraid. That means that you've got to believe God even when fear is knocking at your door. So that's number six. The seventh thing that you must do while you're waiting for God to answer your petition is you've got to see it. This waiting season, this desert, this um, I'm waiting on God to bring my breakthrough. You've got to see it as an opportunity to be able to experience the goodness of God. This is an opportunity for you. So look, I want you to read and I want to read to you um, Psalm chapter 27 verse 13. And it says, I am still confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's what God tells us in Psalm 27, 13. He said, I'm confident in this, that I'm going to see God's goodness. I'm going to see the breakthrough. I'm going to see the promise that God has told me time and time again. So you have to remember that this is an opportunity for you to see the goodness of God. God gives us a grace while we're waiting for him. This means that while we're waiting and seeing it as an opportunity, I cannot go towards or lean towards grumbling and complaining. Because if I start to complain, complaining, people that complain actually are people that don't know who they are. People with identity do not complain. People that know who they are and know who God is. Look what the psalmist says. It says, I am still confident in this, that I will see the goodness of God. And so when you are discontented, when you are uh, complaining, uh, you feel selfish, you start to grumble, you grow bitter because God has not answered you. Well, that's not really seeing the goodness of God. You're, you're looking at your problem. You're, you're facing the situation and you're really focusing on what hasn't happened. Quit focusing on what hasn't happened. Focus on God. Focus on Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. Focus on Jesus, the one that designed you, the one that told you that it was going to come to pass. And when you're focused on God, 
You will not lean towards grumbling. You won't allow your heart to become bitter because you have not seen uh, that promise be fulfilled. So you've got to see this as an opportunity where you are learning about the grace of God. It is an opportunity where you are growing strong in patience. Patience is actually being developed in your life. That while you're waiting, this is a great opportunity for you to grow. This is a great opportunity for you to start getting ready. For what? For the promise to be fulfilled. You know, many of you that are watching me and are listening to me, you are not ready for the promise of God. This is an opportunity to see the greatness of God, His grace, His love, His mercy towards you, how He's developing your character through this season. So see it as an opportunity. It is not an opportunity for us to lean towards uh, complaining. We see the children of Israel and they complained and they murmured and they lost the promised land and they never entered into what God had for them. So we must be people that see it as an opportunity. Number eight. What am I to do while I'm waiting for the promises of God? Listen, you've got to wait for God's promises instead of going in your own direction. That is number eight. While you're waiting on God, do not go in your own direction. Do not start leaning on your own understanding, which is one of one through five. But you also have to be a person that doesn't go on your own way because God did not come through for you this last February or this next February 2020 with your spouse or for your future mate. And now you're sitting here and you're going, well, you know, God hasn't brought my future mate. So I guess I'm just going to date, you know, the guy that I met at school. No, don't go on your own way. Now the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter one, verse four, Jesus gave them instructions and he said to them, wait here until the Holy Spirit descends and comes and touches and baptizes everybody. Wait here. Where? In the upper room. The scripture tells us that God told them to wait. God is telling you, wait on the Lord. So oftentimes, while we're waiting on God, we can easily fall prey to a temptation that makes us go in our own way. Now listen, do you know how many people probably lost the promise of God and they did not wait for God. God's goodness is promised to those who wait patiently. God's promises are given to those who are waiting on him. Don't go off on some tangent in your own way, in your own direction, because you're anxious. Matter of fact, anxiousness is really the seduction. The way the enemy comes into our lives to get us to just do our own plan and come up with our own ideas and do our own way. So you've got to wait on the promise of God instead of going on your own way. Number nine, I want you to write it down or remember this. You've got to continue steadfast in prayer, being watchful with thanksgiving. That is number nine. What do I do while I wait on God? You've got to continue steadfast. Steadfast means without stopping. Steadfast means continuously. Steadfast means without interruption. Steadfast means that you are going to continue until you see the manifestation. So we are to be steadfast in prayer, being watchful with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter four, verse two, it says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Now, I'm not going to grow um, bitter. I'm not going to become uh, or go into murmuring or complaining. But rather, I'm going to be grateful and thankful while I wait on the promises of God. It is an opportunity for God to develop my character. It is an opportunity for God to develop your uh, character, your, the way you think, uh, your spirit man is going to grow during this season. Um, so Colossians tells me to devote myself to prayer. Now, if I'm waiting on God to do something, that means that I am going to be steadfast in prayer. Meaning this, I am not going to stop praying. I'm not going to even grow tired in prayer. Some of you are watching and listening to me and you're getting tired and you feel weary because God hasn't answered it. So, you know, you kind of are fading away in your prayer. No, this is not the time to fade away in prayer. While you're waiting on God, it is not the season or the time to fade away in prayer. Quite the contrary. You must be steadfast. I mean, you've got to hit it again. 
You know, you've got to knock again. You've got to fast again. You've got to pray again. You're going to have to declare again. Until when? Until you see it manifest. If it's according to the will of God, you're aligned to the promises of God, and you are praying prayers that are according to his promises and his word and what he has spoken to you, you must pray that thing until it happens. I mean, learn from the prophet Elisha. He prayed until rain came down. I mean, how many people would have given up? How many people would have doubted? You know, well, there was a, a cloud the size of a man's hand. And here the servant, you know, is saying, Elisha, there is no rain. There's not even a cloud in the sky. And you know what Elisha would do, the prophet? He would say, go again. Go check again. You know what he was doing? He was praying because the man of God saw something internally. He saw something inside. You know, many things, many times, the things that we see in the spirit realm, we see them internally. It's almost like, I know God is going to answer that. I have felt that. Well, how do you know? Did you see it in the natural? No, it's by faith. Faith sees, faith has eyes, faith can see something internally, and you just have a knowing, you just know what God spoke to you, you just know that that husband is going to come to Jesus, you just know that God is going to bring the financial breakthrough that church, you just have this knowing inside of you, now the devil is always working to try to get you to doubt, but faith has eyes to see, so you've got to pray steadfastly, thanking God, and being watchful and expectant. And the last one that I want to leave with you is remember the blessings yet to come. You know, Isaiah tells us in chapter uh, verse, chapter 30, verse 18, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. It says the Lord longs to be gracious to you. So this is... This is a time to remember that the blessings of God are about to come. This is a time to remember, hey, God longs to be gracious to me. You know God longs to release the breakthrough in your life. God longs to give you the desires of your heart. The Bible says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So when we delight in God, delighting in him, in other words, he's number one. In other words, I enjoy being with him more than I, I enjoy, you know, doing something else. He's the God. When we remove all other gods and we delight ourselves in God, he gives us the desires of our heart. So while we're waiting on God, you must remember the blessings are yet to come. You must think about the blessing that is yet to come. I mean, I want you to even start imagining it. I mean, that's why God gave us our imagination. It's so that we can walk by faith. So I want you to start closing your eyes and visualizing that blessing. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine that that breakthrough already came. How does it feel? What does it smell like? What does it look like? I mean, how do you feel that you already received that blessing in your life? I want you to close your eyes and think about that for a moment. Remember the blessings that are yet to come. Listen, as long as our hope is set on this life, gratifying the flesh, um, we're probably going to be very frustrated. If our eyes are on this life only, and, you know, we're going to feel hopeless sometimes. But when our hope is in the Lord, when our hope is on Jesus, and I remember he's about to do something, you know, where my eyes are no longer on earthly things, but my eyes are on heavenly things. And I think about the goodness of God, how gracious he is, how he rises every day to show me his compassion, to show me his goodness, to show me his justice. Then you can wait on him. It says, blessed are all those who wait on him. Think about that. You're blessed because you wait on the Lord. So what are we supposed to do while we wait on the Lord? Well, we're supposed to be strong and we're supposed to be courageous. We're supposed to see it as an opportunity to experience the goodness of God. I want you to, number six, and I'm going to re-paraphrase it, wait for God's promise instead of going on your own tangent or your own way. Pray steadfastly. Be watchful and thankful all the time. And lastly, remember the blessings yet to come. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to pray that during this time, you know, a lot of times we say Happy New Year. We are saying, well, God, we're supposed to bring it now. Look, I don't know when God is going to release your promise, but I do know that he is. I don't know when God is going to bring that breakthrough, 
But one thing I do know about my God is that he will do it. He's gracious and he's faithful. And every day he wants to show you his graciousness. So I'm going to pray that God release a grace over your life to be able to endure, to be able to continue to pray. And that if any of you grew weary in praying, you're going to pick up that prayer again and you're going to pray like nobody's business. Nobody can pray for that like you. Don't give that prayer petition to somebody else. You can ask other people to pray for you and with you and to stand alongside with you because the prayer right of a righteous man is powerful and it availeth much. Yes, your prayers are very powerful. And yes, if I join my prayer to somebody else, two are better than one. I understand that. If any two agree about anything, whatever they ask for shall be given to them. Yes, ask other people to pray with you and stand in the gap with you. But honestly, nobody can pray for that thing like you because nobody feels it like you. So if you've grown weary in praying, I want you to continue to pray until you hit and until you, uh, or the manifestation is released completely over your life. So I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every person that is watching me and I pray, Father, for the grace of God to fall over them. I pray, Father, for a peace that surpasses all understanding to fall upon your viewers, God, and your people. I ask you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you begin, Father, to give them the desire and the thrust and that you activate, God, even that desire to be able to pray with steadfastness, that they would focus on you, that their eyes would not be on earthly things, but their eyes would be focused on you, God. I pray, Father, that their attention would be on you and that they would see this as an opportunity, God, that you are growing them, that this is an opportunity for them, Father, in the desert, in the waiting, to see your goodness, to see your grace, Father, I'm asking you, God, to reveal that to them, those that are watching and listening, God, that they would be able to see, God, that you are working out their character, that you're maturing them, God, to those that have been immature in the previous season, God. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you begin to minister them throughout this season and that they would remember your goodness and that they remember your graciousness and that they remember, God, that you are using this season, God, to mature them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that they would not go in their own way. Somebody that is watching me, that wants to do their own thing and wants to have their own agenda because they're tired of waiting on God. Father, today I intercept that and I declare and decree, Father, that that person is coming back to your perfect will. That they will not go on their own way, God, but they will seek your will and they will wait for your promises. God, I thank you. I thank you for every viewer Release your grace. Release your presence during this time, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do. I call breakthrough in the people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for viewing. We love you guys, and we will see you next Monday. Blessings to everybody. Don't forget to share this. Make sure you hit the bell. Go and share the podcast with everybody you possibly can. And please, please share it with anybody that you know is going through something, a season in their life where they're waiting for a promise, uh, a prayer to be answered. So until next time, thanks again. I love you all.